It's time to talk sports. It's time for the show. When you hear this song on the radio, it's time to tune in. Better act fast. Let me get that part of Potograph. Sports Talk Radio. Starting now. It's time. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 161 of Let Me Get That Potograph. Excellent introduction. Of course, my name is Drew or the DH, and providing that amazing introduction, my awesome co host, Mr. Scott Rappaport, aka Michael Buffer Jr. Uh, what's going on, Drew? What's up, buddy? I love, you know, I love pulling that out every once in a while. I don't, I don't like it to be a weekly thing, but. Right. The, um, well, I get to add the bell, so I'm happy. So I know I'll bust that out every <laughs> once in a while. So I well, hope everybody is doing well and welcome everybody. Like I said, to episode 161. And man, we've got a busy one today. Uh, the hobby definitely takes no weeks off. Today. Actually, Drew, and you know what? You know what does take a week off though? What's that? Scandals. Yes, no we scandal. Got we got nothing this week. We get to talk about the normal stuff that we want to talk about. Yes, we actually get to talk about the hobby. It's amazing. Like the the good stuff and the actual cards and the players <laughs> and not some bad thing. Uh, even though to follow that up real quick, um, a bunch of uncut sheets have now hit eBay of PMGs. So that's always a little bit scary, but I'm sure we'll be talking about that in a few weeks. But we do have a scandal-free episode today. So uh as I was saying, Scott, we're going to dive into our first topic today. And, man, it's finally out. Um, normally, normally we'd already been talking about it and been looking at it a little bit. But Tops finally, finally put out the 2023 design for their flagship line. The 2023 Top Series 1, 2, and update design. Uh, basically Chrome. The, the design you're going to see on pretty much 90% of Tops products this year. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like it. Okay. You know, I um, I, I like that they kept the border. You know, yes. they did not. They didn't go back to a borderless design. You know what? Save that for Stadium Club. Yep. Stadium Club is a borderless product. Need borders, which is good. I like the small picture, the small headshot of the player at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I That's like very the team. old school feel. Very old school vintage feel with that. Um, a little bit. It's, I mean, it's a little bit smaller than what you typically saw in vintage, yeah. but I, I like that. I like the team logo subtly Ooh. in the back, you okay. know, behind, behind the name, uh, overall. And I haven't seen the back, but I'm assuming it's going to be a standard tops, you know, yeah. flagship back. I overall, I like it. Okay. Um, I, I agree with some points. I, I always, question if i'm gonna like it when they release it so i, I want to give it a, a little bit more time to sink in and i really want to see some actual cards um bold choice cotton with uh your uh release there tops with um putting adley rushman out i i, I would have liked to have seen a better player <laughs> maybe put on the card i hope he's not card number one i hope that's not any signifier well as they typically when they typically release it they typically release it with you know one of the hot rookies that's going to be in the product yeah it was odd it was odd to see adley uh but i as far as the design goes love the full border i agree um tops i think needs to be full border and if you're gonna have a border please keep it a full border um i like i like the general layout i love the headshots because i think some of them are going to be absolutely hilarious and so i can't wait for the funny ones that come out <laughs> so basically headshots. what you're basically what you're saying is you're really hoping that benny montgomery gets called up uh before series two or update uh and those deadlines right because yeah you want, you want to see because you know you know he's going to try to do something funny with that oh 100 percent. and so I, I i like the head design but the part that I'm a little iffy on is the part that you said you liked, and that's the big block of the team logo. I think it's a little too big, and it with the name and the team underneath it, it just makes it a little too crowded for, for me. I, I'm not sure. I want to see them in person, but it I don't know. It's almost too much. I would have liked to have seen something different on how to put the team name out there because it takes up a good – 
a good maybe fifth of the actual card inside the border. So, I mean, it's a pretty large team logo. And so I, I'll be interested to see. But the, the one thing I pray is that they change the damn Independence Day parallels back to something cool and not just stars on the border. I really hope when it comes to parallels that they do something awesome with the Independence Day ones like they used to. But we'll we'll talk about that when it when it comes out and, and when it's all released, and I'm sure on Let It Rip. But uh, overall, I, I like the design. I'm just not sure about the the team logo box. I, I'm not so sure about that. And I, and I, I will say that. I like I like the 2022 design better than the 2023. Me too. But when I think of you know how bad it could be. Oh yeah. You know, we go back. Well, I, we go back to 2021. I wasn't a fan of 2016. No, didn't really like 2017 or 2018 either. No, there was a string. There was a string. Yeah. There where they were awful. Right. And now they, they went and I, and frankly, 2020, you know, with the border on one side of the card, but alternating, you know, between the two different sides, depending on the card, I wasn't a fan of that either because it makes it tough to look through them. And if I'm if I'm looking through for something specific, I got to change the way that I'm shuffling through the cards right. because the border is on the other side for half of them. Yeah. What I'd like to see him do, because I have not seen what the horizontal design is going to look like. Yes. So I'm hoping either one, they're getting rid of the horizontal design mm-hmm. or or they only utilize the horizontal design for pitchers. Because yeah. you can get a good you know, with that wide view, yeah. you can get a better shot of them in the stretch throwing, yeah. you know. Yeah, you need that wider canvas to encompass. Exactly. This, especially when you're talking about these big guys we have nowadays with these long, you know, wingspans and stuff. You need a horizontal card for pitchers and stuff. Exactly. See, those cards right there, that's where I'm worried about. Like, on that horizontal card, how much is that team box going to take up? Yeah, and I think like, I think it takes up a little bit more on the horizontal uh, cards, yeah. but like I said, I you know I really hope the tops would someday just use the horizontal design for pitchers, yeah, and use the and maybe vertical. some of the dual things and update with like a uh, couple players on them or something, the fun cards, but not yeah, like, not the you important know, ones exactly. You know, use it for a you know a big Gatorade dump or you know the team cards. It's okay to use the horizontal or sorry let me let me use the official phrase the landscape design yeah but then of course you wind up with a pack and all of a sudden you see a whole bunch of horizontal ones and it's like oh crap i got all pictures on this one but it's i still think it's better or just eliminate it completely yeah yeah you know i'm okay with that no me too me too i i i can't stand horizontal cards in baseball personally i they drive me crazy i'd be perfectly fine with no horizontal cards but i do worry about that team box but overall i think the design is awesome they they did a good job with the release the response that i've heard seems to be mostly positive from the community i've not heard a lot of complaints like you saw um in previous years and kudos to tops on this you use the legible font again. Thank you. <laughs> we can read them. You can it actually. Wasn't, look at the- it wasn't so much of the legible font in 2021. It was the font size. Yeah. That was the that was the biggest issue. Is they they left so little real estate on that card to put the name in there, and then they put it on an angle, which you and know, added they- a stroke and a shadowing effect behind it like it was yes. way too way too fancy when it comes to the actual artistic detailing of the name yeah and, and hopefully and I, I hate to see people lose their jobs but hopefully the designer on that one was not kept on after fanatics bought the company right. um I, I you know i like what they've done since it's clean it's classic but i think there's a definite there's a little bit of room for improvement of course but uh, yeah. 2021 was just a disaster it's very hard to uh, say it is know, but one thing i've noticed about tops one. and i know I, it, I know you notice this too but you know they kind of when they put out a release that changes things up a little bit it kind of signifies where they're going for the next couple years so i think this design shift right here is what what we're going to see offshoots of for the next couple years um, i think that team box is something that sadly in my opinion maybe my mind gets changed when i see him in person but 
I think that's something that may stay around for a couple of years. Uh, the the small uh, headshot, I think, could actually stay around for a couple of years with slight alterations. Um, this does sign. This does feel very much like a transition from kind of like when they transitioned from the half borders and no borders back to a border design. Um, this kind of feels like a, a transitional. Uh, your product for me. Well, you had that string, you know, 2016, 17, and 18, which had some similarities, you know, to the design. You know, those were all borderless. You had 2019, 2020, which were either half border or a quarter border. And 2021, which was a complete departure from either of those two design elements, but they did go back to the full border on that one. And then 2021 uh, made what it seemed like a major change, you know, from so like 2021 just kind of stood out by itself, which we're glad, um, because yes. of, you know, the whole yeah. you know, indication. So the real question, though, is, is 2022 the year that kind of starts that trend of design elements or yeah. is it going to be 2023? Because right. there are some there are some things with 2023 that borrow from 2022. Very much so. Yeah. So you know, are we going to see the large team logo stretched across the bottom of the card in 2024, 2025? Yeah. That, that's kind of, I'm hoping it's going to be more like the 2022 design overall long term, but yeah. maybe keeping the headshot from 2023, Yeah, you know, going forward. And I do like the placement while we're dissecting the, the card itself. You know, I do like the placement of the name and everything. I love the putting it in the center, putting it de- dead center, not on the left, not on the right, not not tucked in. They, it, it feels more featured on the card as opposed to previous years. So I like that as well. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good thing. Maybe I vaguely remember a year where they did – they did a full action shot on the front and then they put the headshot on the back. Yep. Um, yep. There were at least a couple of years where they did that. I kind of like that too, because it gives Me you too. more, it gives you more real estate on the front for better images. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the back, it's nice to see the headshot because you can see what the guy looks like. Yep. So, yeah, I agree. But, you know, ultimately it's going to come down to the photography used, <laughs> you know, uh, how they use that real estate that they have. As I said, uh, a little bit of it is taken away. So some of those shots that you may have been able to use before, you might not be able to use now. They might not look as good. But, you know, one thing's for sure, we'll be finding out soon enough. But after uh, a long delay, Tops is finally put out their 2023 design for their flagship products. And Scott, uh, speaking, yeah, of delay, speaking of delays, um, I, I, I've noticed a couple of things. So yes. tops has seemed to caught to have caught up. With yeah. After that massive releases. flood of, uh, products that came out at once, yes. they, they pretty much caught up. So they're, they're relatively caught up. There's a couple that are delayed from where they normally are, but they're still going to be out before you know the end of the year. Panini is relatively caught up. The yep. final 2021 football product with Select just came out, and basketball. Being able to get being able to get that out, by the way, for football uh, is crucial for them to be able to get back on track next year. Next year, right? Next year, you may be able to see the prism and the optics back at the pre December type of time frame that they were used to. Cause that used to be everyone's Christmas present. Well, I think basketball. prism, I think prism was always prism basketball was all, or I'm sorry, that's football. Yeah. For optic came out. I was thinking basketball because optic ba- or uh, prism basketball usually came out in mid November. Yeah. And November, then optic December, was, it, was your optic Christmas, was it was your Christmas present for the end right. of the year. You know, you got your prism in both sports. And I think getting that out in football especially being able to get uh, all those releases out now is essential for them to be able to get back on track for next calendar year, back to that release date schedule that we were used to for so long. Yeah. Now here's my question. Yeah. So tops has been able to catch up. Panini has been able to catch up. Mm -hmm. Upper deck is still way, way behind. They just released their final product for the, 2020 21 season yeah. and 
they have a ways to go before they there's a ton of products still needing to be released on the 2122 product and they've cut a lot of stuff i don't see they didn't do they they eliminated the cup which was they, crazy i me. don't see the cup on any upcoming release calendars for 2122 why is it that upper deck is still way behind but panini and tops have been able to catch up no that that's a really good question. Uh, shout out to Upper Deck, by the way, uh, for sending, let me get that potograph, an awesome box of extended series that we were able to do for Letter Rip. But like you said, extended series just came out. The cup, that's got to be something where they're going to do a release date announcement later. There's no way you can cut the cup. There, there's, there's just no way. I don't see Upper Deck doing it. I, I, but Well, they would have they would have announced it. Calendar. 2021 they would have announced it um yeah. for 21 22 i you know i can see them adding a an announcement because there's still a lot of that product that still hasn't been produced yet yeah but i don't i, I don't see it for 2021 no, i don't see no i i haven't heard anything about it or heard any rumblings or seen anything whatsoever on it but i it I don't know. Um, I mean, I know I know supply chain issues and everything have been a, a major issue. But as we spoke about, Tops and Panini, they're back on track. They're able to get stuff back on track. Upper Deck puts out a lot less products, too. Now, granted, they use different printers. They use different facilities than uh, the other companies do. The only thing that I can think of is that their facilities weren't capable of handling these problems as well as the ones that tops and panini share because upper deck does use you know different people to produce their cards right and we also know that the you know the card stock was part of the issue as to why there were production yeah. delays um because of course none of that is produced in the united and they states use a lot of, and also upper deck uses a lot of nicer card stock at, for their products, even even generic products, like even no, their exactly. product is is a nice card stock. Now we we know that Tops and Panini both use Cardamundi um, yes. for the majority of their stuff. And GCI, yes, yeah, and GCI. So I'm wondering though if maybe the delay is because Upper Deck's factory is not top of the list when it comes to getting those supplies, right? Where Cardamundi and GCI are because they do such massive volumes. Everything. Yeah. And again, it's just a guess. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, there's been no there's been no announcement. There's been no explanation. Uh, I don't think the, honestly, I don't think the question's been raised. <laughs> I don't think outside of just, hey, there's been product issues and product delays across the board. I don't think the question's really been raised, but it's it's very interesting. And I, I hope it doesn't lead to cutting a product like the cup, because that's. That's an iconic product, and yeah. this is a great rookie class. You want those iconic RPAs. You want those iconic releases of these players, and I I really hope an announcement's coming because not having that is going to be a massive blow, especially with how much Parkhurst I see on the shelves right now. I mean, it like to to cut the cup and keep Parkhurst is just mind blowing. Well, I think it's probably easier to get the card stock for of course for Parkhurst, so they they're able to print it and put it out. Yeah. My biggest thing is, you know, you've got products from multiple years coming out at the same time. Yeah, how, how much confusion is this causing? With especially with all the new people that have jumped into the hobby, as to oh, you're buying, you know, you're buying Parkhurst off the shelf and not realizing that it's this year's thinking that it's still last year's product it's and, causing massive confusion man yeah it's so you're, you're trying so... to pull you're trying to pull the good you know the the rookies from one year yeah but you, what you actually bought was this year's product not last year's product or you right, bought last yeah. year's product and not this year's product i get that all the time people uh like when i sell on whatnot and stuff they'll purchase something and not even realize that oh wait whoops wrong year like with select and products like that I've had tons yeah. of people that just look at the year and they get so confused because like you said, they're overlapping yep. these years. Or I mean, SP authentic just came yes. out a short time ago, yes. you know, right before the national. And even, even I got a little bit confused because I, 
I right. stopped doing hockey, you know, in, in mass quantities like I used to. But what I've uh, I'm going, I'm like, wait a minute. Now, there's no way they released it. Like, I, I thought that came out a year ago. Yeah. No, no, no. That was the 2020, 21 <laughs> product. And it's going to it's going to cause problems. It's going to, you know, cause confusion. And that's that's that. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think it's uh, it's very confusing. I, I can only assume it is, like we were saying, that their facilities just weren't able to handle the massive issues that did arise compared to Carter Mundy and GCI. Um, but hopefully they can get back on track, and I, I really pray that this doesn't mean that they cut the cup, because if they cut the cup, that's just going to be brutal. But uh, yeah. Upper Deck, hope you guys can get back on track soon, <laughs> yeah. because uh, I love the products, but please don't cut the, please don't cut the cup, please. <laughs> and we know we know they listen, so um, yes, you know, hopefully it's the right people that are you know that are listening this week and exactly. you know, they'll talk about it internally and say, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and keep the cup. Um, <laughs> or maybe honestly, maybe even if you create the RPAs of the rookies and maybe some of the good inserts and uh, included in it as an insert uh, or as a chase yeah. in, a, in a different product. Yeah. Um, that way at least there is cup, rpas out there for you know some of the the better rookies there you go well uh hopefully we get some answers but um we will find out soon but scott's move on from there to uh something big happening in the nba my man uh this kind of came out of nowhere i mean they'd been shopping him for a little bit but these two teams hadn't been linked that much uh for quite a while but donovan mitchell traded from the Jazz as they can continue to gut what was such a promising team, sending Donovan Mitchell over to the Cleveland Cavaliers for Lori Markinen, Ochi Abagaji, Colin Sexton, three unprotected first-round picks, 2025, 20, 27, and 29, and two pick swaps in 26 and 28 for Donovan Mitchell. So Donovan Mitchell heads to Cleveland with an incredibly strong young core where they only had to give up Sexton, the guy they were looking to move anyway. Well, but don't forget, Akbaji was also the 14th overall yes, draft no, no, he, this Yes, no, no, he's year. a very promising young player. Very. Correct. Now, also, in addition to those three first-rounders and the, the pick swaps, don't forget, they also got four first-rounders from Minnesota for right. the Rudy Gobert trade. Uh, Utah is stocking first round draft picks. Yes. And we know, look, we knew that Utah was going to be going through a rebuild. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think it's going to be that bad of a no. rebuild. Not, um, what, not with this. You can package those picks for. Months. Well, even without packaging the picks, if you look at the players that they got in return, yeah. they're not terrible players they weren't taking guys that teams just wanted to get rid of their contracts right you know and then and then you're planning on cutting them you're you're getting guys that actually have solid potential sexton i think is a great you know has a ton of potential as well i don't think he's donovan sexton mitchell can be sexton can be an amazing basketball player i don't think he's going to be a number one but sexton can easily be that second guy and a guy that puts up a good 1925 yeah. points, you know, and, and he, he just got he just got player. overshadowed over the last couple of years in Cleveland. Yeah. You know, Garland came on, couple um, injuries that hit him exactly. I mean, you know, then Mobley, you know, popped into the scene, and you know, you got a, a couple of years where it's like, all right, so now we're playing second fiddle to somebody else. I think going to Utah, it's going to provide a fresh start for him. I, I and think a chance to shine minutes. Yeah. Absolutely, he's going to get a he's going to get a ton of minutes over there. But like you mentioned earlier, those first round draft picks are massive trade bait. Yes, if you know if Utah wants to speed up the process of that rebuild, they can very easily package a couple of first rounders for some solid talent. You know, I I actually think you know as, as good as we think Cleveland made out in this trade. Yeah, um, you know, and marketing's not shabby either. No, you know, I got I got a chance to see him play for a long time with the you know well not a long time but you know three four years with the Bulls, so I I know the potential that he's got as long as he can stay healthy. Everybody's looking at Cleveland saying, "Hey, you guys got the the better end of this deal," but I I wouldn't shortchange what Utah got 
with that I one. Don't, I don't um, think we can judge who got the better end of the deal yet, especially with how many picks were involved. Yep. I want to see what those picks turn into. If it turns into being able to trade for a disgruntled player that mm-hmm. ends up being your franchise one, and you can build all those other first round draft picks around him. Absolutely. Awesome. But yep. I look at this team now, I mean, you've got Jared Allen, you've got Donovan Mitchell, you've got Evan Mobley, you've got Karis Levert, uh, another amazing, amazing player. He is Levert. Levert is possibly one of the most underrated players. Yes, uh, within and, the ho- within the hobby. Oh, absolutely. He gets absolutely. no he gets no love in the hobby. But I think he might now, because one thing I will say is, and a lot of people are like, ah, oh, he got traded to Cleveland. Cleveland has a collecting base. Cleveland is strong in the hobby. There, there's a reason the National goes there, and it's not just because of the location. It's because of the turnout that they get. And I, I've experienced Nationals in Cleveland. The Cleveland collecting base is massive. LeBron only intensified that tenfold. But you look at... Well, I think, Cleveland, honestly, as much as I hate to say something good about LeBron, I think LeBron created it. Cleveland really had no you know, major star players right. that would drive collectors until LeBron got there. Yeah. Um, I think LeBron created that collector's market within Cleveland. But with the exception of LeBron, the Cleveland teams, you know, the players that play for those Cleveland teams don't necessarily translate to the collectors outside of Cleveland. And you're right. Cleveland right. has a massive collector base, but the guys that are playing for the team aren't as appealing outside of that market. But Donovan Mitchell changes. Donovan Mitchell's a different Mitchell story. changes. Yes, yeah. Mitchell definitely changes that. And I now, think he boosts I think he boosts Evan Mobley's stock. I think he boosts Karis Levert's stock. I mean, if I'm anyone, I've been high on Garland since he was a rookie. I'm just glad he finally has someone true to play with. Uh, yeah. I love it. But the Garland and Mobley are going to are going to thrive from this trade so much in the hobby and on the court. Well, I still don't think Levert gets the hobby love. Uh, you know, even with the Mitchell trade, because he didn't he hasn't yeah. gotten the love ever. You I know, know with it, with any of the teams that he's been with, and it it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Levert's yeah. going to get you know crapped on in the hobby undeservedly. I do think um, I do think he goes up. I goes up though. I don't think uh, I do think he's a, one of those small plays. If you're into low risk investments, he's a he's a pop and grab right now. All right. So yeah, now, so now here's here's the million dollar question. So now that Donovan Mitchell is in Cleveland, yeah, what does that do? Because there's been a lot of speculation around you know, LeBron wanting to go back and yeah. you know, play his final year, or maybe two years in Cleveland with his son. Yeah. If assuming that Cleveland drafts his son now that Mitchell is there, what does that do to, you know, prior to this, prior to this trade, would LeBron want to go back and play with that existing team? Well, I think if they draft his son, yes, no matter what. But the one thing that Cleveland would have to do, first of all, is you have to get rid of Kevin Love. Uh, they're still paying him twenty-eight million, almost $29 million a year. You've got to get him off your books quick if you want to be able to make that move at all. But, I mean, yeah, I think he'd want to go there because I think he'd, I think the NBA has become so positionless that – you can build a pretty decent team. And I think, I think Mitchell, LeBron, Mobley, Garland, I mean, you wouldn't have all those guys if LeBron came unless he came as a free agent, um, which he set himself up to be able to do if he wants. Right. Um, Well, my, my thinking is that Mitchell being there would actually increase the odds that LeBron would want to go back. Well, me too. That's what I was going to play with Mitchell. Me too. I was going to say, I think he would like to play with that team. And I think he would look at that team. I think by then Mobley establishes himself as a a dominant force. He's going to be in his third year, which you know my my rule. I think that's when he's going to really take off. That's when I see Garland, I think, will be firmly established. I think he'd look at that team and say, hell yeah, I'd go back there in a heartbeat. And I do think you're going to see him take a massively low contract going to be a pay cut for him he's going to he's going to take whatever it is you know well i think he would, he would have to take a he would have to take a massive pay cut because i don't think cleveland will be he doesn't have, cleveland doesn't have the revenue to be able to pay because you know 
Mitchell's going right. to wind up getting a max contract. Um, right. And like I said, you know. they've still got Kevin Love on the books. who's $29 right. million dollars a year in salary. You've got Levert, who's pretty expensive. You've got Mobley on a rookie year. But, I mean, Levert's almost $20 million alone. But, you know, yeah. yeah, I could see LeBron coming back. But I, I do think this sets up for the possibility of LeBron, Bronny Jr., and Donovan Mitchell all on the same team. I do think it sets up that possibility. And now I think LeBron looks at the Cleveland situation and says, oh, shit, we, I might not go play with my kid and lose 50 games. We might actually yeah. be able to win. <laughs> yeah. So I that's, yeah, that was kind of my, my thinking on that was that, you know, he's more inclined to go back to Cleveland with Mitchell there. Absolutely. Well, one thing's for sure is we'll see what happens. But Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers, Utah Jazz, shaking up the hobby, shaking up the basketball world. But guys, uh, we will be right back because uh, we got bills to pay. And welcome back, everybody, to episode 161 of Let Me Get That Potograph. And now, everybody, it is time for the segment that is still taking the nation by storm you know what it is it's time for movers and shakers and uh scott i'm gonna yeah. let you kick it off this week since i kicked it off uh last time but uh who you got this week for movers and shakers all right drew so this week i got one that i don't think anybody saw coming okay i don't think anybody in their right mind saw this coming all right all right mitchell trubisky Yes. Is the yep. starting quarterback yep. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes. Wow. Now, yeah. I love this from a hobby standpoint because people were going nuts when the Bears drafted him. Yep. People were paying big money for his, you know, for his stuff. And then he fell victim to the same thing that every Bears quarterback since the beginning of time has fallen victim to. And that is the worst offensive line in the NFL. Yeah. Um, without a good offensive line, the quarterback is going to fail no matter who you put in there. You could put yeah. Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers or anybody you anybody you pick. You put Joe Montana, Dan Marino. It doesn't make a difference. If you have a terrible offensive line, that quarterback is going to struggle. Well, Trubisky now has a pretty solid offensive line in Pittsburgh, and we're going to get to see what he can really do on a yeah. on a regular basis. He had a couple of good moments as the backup in Buffalo, but he was still playing behind Josh Allen. And now he's the number one guy in Pittsburgh. The the other surprising move is Mason Rudolph is now number three. Yeah. Uh, behind Kenny Pickett, the rookie. Rudolph has been waiting for his chance and just didn't do enough in the preseason to get the spot that he had assumed was his. Yeah, And, you know, he thought he had deserved and, you know, sat behind Roethlisberger for, you know, what, three years? Oh, yeah. <laughs> three seasons, no, something like that. He was the heir apparent. And all of a sudden, you know, Trubisky comes in as a free agent. They draft Pickett. And now Rudolph is number three. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what, you know, Trubisky is really capable of. You know, he's got a solid running back. He's got a couple of solid receivers. He's got a, a solid offensive line. You know, he's going to get the protection that he's going to need. And it's, you know, he still has got, he still has legs underneath him. He can still run when he yeah. needs to. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the first couple of weeks of the season to see what he does. And maybe he'll start to get some hobby love again. Hey, I'd, I'd love to see it. Um, obviously, at one point in time, he had massive hobby love, you know. Yep. It, I, I always hate to see, you know, guys drop like that. You know, it's never fun to watch, even though, you know, Trubisky did go to UNC when he should have gone to East Carolina, but whatever. I can forgive <laughs> dumb things like that. You know, it's okay. But, uh, no, you're dead on. That's a that's a great pick. He's He's got the talent. He's got weapons around him. He's still got legs underneath him. He's a mobile quarterback. Yep. Tomlin and co., they know what they're doing there. They, they always have. They've always seemed to make good decisions. They always seem to be in the hunt. I see nothing wrong with this pick, especially from a hobby perspective. Trubisky, low. The the potential you go into Pittsburgh and start to win some games? Yep. Shit. You're going through the roof. And so I, I love that pick, man. I, I think it's excellent. Now, keep in mind, right? you got to remember, 
when the Bears traded up to number two to draft yeah. him, they chose him over two other quarterbacks that were available. Mahomes, mm-hmm. who has a Super Bowl ring now, and Deshaun Watson, who has multiple lawsuits, yeah, um, but is still, a, is still a solid quarterback. And for some reason, they went up and they they took Trubisky, which is probably good for those two because they would have been destroyed, you know, with that lack of an offensive line. <laughs> um, but that's yeah, like, that, that's no, I, absolutely. And speaking of Deshaun Watson, buddy, it just nailed my mover and shaker this week. Uh, and I will tell you, I never expected him to be on my movers and shakers list unless it was moving straight to jail. I thought it was the massage therapists that were doing the moving and shaking. (laughs) Well, they definitely were, but he's moving and shaking up in the hobby right now, man. And uh, I have absolutely no clue why. I don't know why. I guess people are just assuming he's going to come back. I it's probably, you know what? It's probably the same guys that are that at the beginning of the season drive up the Michael Porter Jr. prices. Probably yeah, it makes it would make sense, but <laughs> that that's good. That's a good analogy because um, I I don't get it. But I mean his uh, his gold uh, field level at a ten select PSA ten just sold for eighty seven hundred. It's up over 15%. It's up over like 30 some percent since the lawsuits and everything came out. His high end stuff and even his silvers, which are base cards that year, but his silver yeah. prism and everything. Well, they were still are, short printed, even though they were, you know, the yes, silver was the base. Yes, they are, but they were all they were all silvers. There is no base, you know. But right. those are all going up. Every all of his big stuff is going up, and there's been multiple record Deshaun Watson sales in the past week. So in, in terms of the hobby, Deshaun Watson has got to be my mover and shaker this week. And I don't understand why. I don't get it. I don't think they're going to be in any contention when he comes back. I don't think he's going to thrive in that environment at all. I just, I don't see it. But for the hobby and what's going on, Deshaun Watson is definitely a mover and shaker. You know, Drew, and I think I can explain it with what is slowly becoming my uh, stock answer to a lot of things that we discuss here. Drugs. Drugs. Yeah. Drugs. <laughs> Drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Drugs are bad, kids. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it leads you to spending ridiculous amounts of money on yeah. cards that 8700 not... bucks on Deshaun yeah. Watson. I mean, exactly. 40K on Davis Mills. I mean, it, it leads to bad decisions, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So once again. Drugs are bad. Okay. Oh, but, right. but you know what? But you know what is good, Drew? What is so good? So we're into Scott? we're into September. We are. And September is always an exciting month because mm. baseball rosters expand. Yes. And with that expansion, we get a lot of prospects that get called up for the month. Yeah. It's you know, for some it's their first time. Actually, for most of them, you know, it's their first time getting a taste of major league play. And it kind of sets the table for what are the rookie cards that we're going to be chasing in the next season? Yeah. So earlier in the show, we talked about 2023 tops design getting announced. So who are the chase cards going to be for right. that product? Now there have been a couple of notable ones, and these are all guys that have come up after, you know, kind of the cutoff. So, you know, for, uh, for update this year. Okay. So we're not going to be talking about the guys that haven't been in series one and series two. So we're not talking about Julio Rodriguez. We're not talking about Bobby right. Wood Jr., Torkelson, et cetera. One guy who came up last week mm-hmm. for the Orioles, Gunnar Henderson. Yes. And great, great had, start. Had an immediate impact. You know, his, fr- his his first hit was a pretty decent distance home run. Yeah. The kid's got some power to him. Kid needs a haircut. But yes. the kid's got some power. And I'm I'm excited to see what he has. But the Orioles, they they've got a pretty deep farm system. They do. Um they also just called up Jesus Aguilar. Mm-hmm. Uh, first baseman. He's a, a pretty highly touted pro, uh, prospect. There's a couple other guys from other teams that I'm uh, excited to see. Geimer Diaz, catcher from the Astros. They just selected his contract. Ryan Aguilar, another Aguilar, the Angels outfielder, just got called up for the first time. And then one prospect that people actually were pretty high on, um, his cards were selling really well, uh, you know, his Bowman Chrome first autos, the right. uh, Wilmer Defoe. Uh, okay. Yeah, Arizona called him up, and then of course, uh, Asturi Ruiz got yeah. recalled. He had, you know, he had some action earlier in the season, but 
but uh, he was part of that trade and went to Milwaukee. Uh, the Brewers just called him up again, so we'll see some extended action out of Asturias Ruiz. So those last two, Defoe and, and Ruiz, have you know had some pretty solid hobby love. Gunnar Henderson has had some yeah. hobby love, um, you know, over the next or over the last couple of years since uh, he was drafted. And I'm actually surprised that we didn't see any big names coming out of the Pittsburgh farm system because they, they had yeah. a they had a lot of guys that were ready to go. They're also not in a position where they're, you know, contending so they can experiment a little bit and give these guys a little bit of playing time. Kind of surprised the Cubs didn't make, you know, a couple of call ups either. Uh, I thought for sure we might see Brendan Davis, you know, come up. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think he's on the I think he's on the DL. But, the, you know, some other moves with some other top prospects that we were expecting to see. Um, there's still a lot of time left in the month. That still may happen. They still may come up for a couple of weeks before the uh, Arizona Fall League season starts. Sure. But these guys are some, these are the guys that I'm kind of keeping an eye on as far as who is going to be the chase. Right. Series one, series two for next year. And that's what I, I want to pose a, a question to you because I, I haven't studied the call ups like you have. So I'm a little unaware of everyone that's been called up. Obviously, like you said, there's a lot of time in the month. They can still, they can still be called up. But do you see names? I mean, we just talked about 2023 tops Chrome or tops to start the show. Do you see any names or foresee any names being called up that can carry a product like a flagship series one, you know, and give it high demand? Cause Gunnar Henderson, yeah, he's had a nice little start, but is that enough to carry a product? Is that enough to really like inspire demand? Is you know how series one gonna look? I think it's gonna look a lot like 2021, where you had decent rookies right in there, but there wasn't one yep. that really stood out. Mm-hmm. You know, people had a lot of hopes with Joe, you know, with Adele, you know, William Contreras, you know, and those guys, um, Key Brian Hayes. But the rookie class that year was there wasn't a solid, you know, individual standout like we see. You know, we saw that in 2020. You know, Luis Robert carried Series Two. Update sucked, but you know, again, that, that was you know we're talking COVID year and all that kind of stuff, so it's a, a little bit different. But you know, Series One was loaded. Bichette was in there. Nico Horner was high for a while. Right. And I think he's going to, I think he's going to wind up coming back. Cause he had a, he had an amazing year this year. You know, obviously we don't need to talk about 2019 because of the rookie <laughs> class there. That was solid. Yeah. Um, at least in series two and in an update. And we don't need to talk about 2018 because again, series two uh, with the two short prints plus update was solid. And 2022 so far we had Wander Franco in series one. Yeah. Obviously carried the product. We had O'Neill Cruz in yes. series two, Spencer Strider. And typically we, you know, when we're talking about rookie cards carrying a product, we typically don't talk about pitchers. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, this guy is he's, he's special, man. He is special and not not short bus special, no. but like legit actual special. Plus, we had the short prints from Witt Rodriguez and Torkelson. Yes. And then they're gonna be the guys that are gonna be carrying update. So we we okay. know this year is is solid. So far, I don't see anybody that is that has come up or would be in you know any of the 2023 baseball products that is strong enough to carry a product. Yeah, and that's that's my biggest concern. We we can discuss like we did at the beginning how how nice the design looks as much as we want, but if if the players aren't in it, I mean it's series one. I think is going to struggle tremendously. And I think Tops knew that. I think Tops is praying that one of these guys comes in and does something a little crazy and uh, in their limited time. And and who knows? We could get some surprise call ups like in from Pittsburgh or you know Chicago or any of those teams. We could get a couple more call ups that could help. But just yep. looking at the names, and I've been lo- looking as we've been discussing everything, going down and looking at the potential call ups. I just I don't see a name there that's going to pop. And that's really going to drive the baseball hobby when we go into the 2023 season. I think it's going to be one of those products where, I mean, they better be dropping box prices for one, which I I do think they will a little bit. But you you better pray. It's going to be one of those releases that you're going to put out and you're going to have to just pray that one of these guys takes off and has lightning in a bottle. Otherwise, you're waiting until Series 2 update 
whatever it is. Uh, but uh, maybe not. Who knows? Who knows who's going to wind up getting get you know getting the call during the the initial right. part of that season where it, it may series two and update may may struggle as well. Yeah, um, like I said, we saw that in twenty twenty one. It wasn't just the bad card design that you know, right. turned people off from that product. It was the the lack of top rookies like we had been yeah. seeing. Uh, you know, going back to twenty seventeen. Uh, you know, with Aaron Judge. But I I don't see unless you know unless you get a miraculous call up and then they start playing well. But none of the guys that I'm thinking of are really in a position to get called up. Right. And I don't think, you know, I don't see Pittsburgh bringing Henry Davis up right now. He could potentially carry a product. I don't see Jordan Lawler coming up. He is somebody yeah. that that I could see potentially carrying a product. Carrying a product, yeah. Um, and it's it's one of those things where, you know, Benny Montgomery could carry a yes. product. Um, we love Benny Montgomery here. That's, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. We, we love Lawler, too. So, I mean, exactly. Lawler's, Lawler's a great guy. A lot of the, I mean, he's been putting a lot of stuff out on Instagram lately, all the, I know. you know, the no, awesome plays he's been doing out there. I love, I love them. Hopefully, my, my goal is to have Benny and Lawler on the show one day. And, and it's going to happen somehow. But, no, we love those guys. But, yeah, they could carry a product. Yeah, they, those guys can carry a product, but they're still, they're still a couple years away. Yeah, from from getting that call up. I had high hopes on Miguel Amaya coming back. He's not getting called up. He's not even right. catching right now. He's hitting. Like, yeah. You know, I, I don't see them calling him up. Brennan Davis, you know, um, is on the DL, so he was a possibility. Um, you know, as far as the, the Cubs go, Ed Howard, he was a highly touted prospect. Um, yeah. he's, been playing, he's been playing like crap. So they're not gonna they're not gonna bring him up. Although the White Sox this year have brought up a couple of guys from Double A that. Should not have been brought up just because they need bodies. Yeah, um, and I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what their thinking was there. But yeah. you're not. I don't think 2023 is going to be a, a phenomenal rookie class. Like you no, said, unless I, somebody comes out and just destroys it. In, yeah, uh, no, they're going to have to do like you know, it's going to be one of those O'Neill Cruz type deals. Someone's going to have to come out of the blue, a strider that that's going to. Uh, command the attention and really you know captivate the entire hobby and it's not going to be someone who's you've been chasing through bowman who's got big name value at and you know for once guys be glad they're printing a lot of this shit because i have a feeling you're going to be chasing next year you're going to be chasing a lot of the stuff from 2019 to 2022 as opposed to that 2023 stuff at least at the beginning on the baseball market like i i really think baseball they've got it at least uh, internally at fanatics and everything like that and tops they've got to be just praying <laughs> for, well for in the past guy. in the past uh at least the last like five years or so they print the product based yeah, on based on based on pre-orders yes um so all the hobby shops are pre-orders the you know the breaker pre-orders the right. you know the retail guy pre-orders i'm curious as to what those pre-order numbers are going to be knowing that there is not going to be a massive rookie class to drive the product. Especially if they don't cut the price too. Like if they keep right. the price the same and they have this rookie class coming in, Oh, those pre-orders are going to be low. Yeah. So if that's the case, you know, long-term it may actually turn out to be a decent product because, that, it, because of the quantity. But that also brings up another really interesting question uh, and something that we'll discuss on another show. But is that going to be the way that they continue to do production from now on? You know, all this stuff could change. That's how the people at, at Tops were running things. Now we're into Fanatics hands. Yeah. Are they going to continue to do that? So, you know, it'll be we'll find out, you know, with 2023 and everything, if at least they're still doing it when we look at production numbers and things like that. But you know, that that could change to the, the Panini model where it's more of a guessing game <laughs> and yeah. they just kind of print what they assume would be the pre-orders, which is how Panini does it. Or if they keep the, well, it's a, it's an, I wouldn't say it's a complete guess. It's an educated guess because they yeah, based it on very, last year. It's a very year's... educated guess based yes. on data and everything. It's not right. going to dart at a board, but it's not based on speaking to people and polling people as it as like tops. And so, right. Or, or, be collecting, or collecting pre-orders, which is, yes. the, you know, probably the smart way to do it from a business standpoint. 
Yeah, well, I would, I, I would tend to agree. <laughs> yeah. But that's um, I, I'm hoping there's somebody else that just pops. Up. I'm hoping there's some no name that nobody has been tracking. Yes. That the ideal situation would be somebody who does not have a first Bowman card who yep. winds up getting called up and just rakes the you know the rest of the month of September, mm-hmm. and they can put them in there and you know in series one. And they can drive the product because they don't have the first Bowman card. You know, there's nothing else for people in the hobby to chase. But I don't. I, I honestly don't see it happening. No, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> but so. uh, we, you know, at least we got a couple more months of baseball, and uh, call ups always fun. Hopefully, we see a couple more. But uh, 2023 definitely looking uh, a little bleak so far. Although, although to round it out to uh, the beginning, the design does look pretty nice. Yeah, I, I like like I said, I like the design. Um, yeah. Not sure I'm gonna like the content. Ex- yeah, exactly. But uh, Scott, man, I think uh, that's a good point to wrap up this week's show. What do you think? I think that is a really good thing to do. All right, I know you're uh, Scott. Scott guys is in extreme pain. He's been refereeing a million games. So I'm, oh, I'm man. surprised. I'm gonna tell you. So uh, we, we talked about made this it through the episode. Yeah, I am too. We, um, you know, I, I've kind of uh, discussed my odyssey into soccer refereeing over the last couple of months. Did a tournament last weekend with four games in a row, and I was in immense pain. And this weekend, there was another tournament that I wound up doing 10 games, um, <laughs> including five in a row on the full 11 v 11 field. The ones last week were on the 7 v 7 field, so it wasn't as much running, but I was still, I, I didn't prepare. Uh, well enough for it. I, right. I didn't stretch the right muscles and things like that. So this week I, I relied on some painkillers uh, <laughs> to get me through it. And it was actually really cool. Those five games I did um, as a crew, my assistant referees on that crew were my brother-in-law and my nephew. Nice. Um, so that was, so that, was that was a lot of fun doing that as a family. Yeah. Um, and then Monday I uh, was the assistant referee on two finals games. And I actually got a chance. I, I love those two games the most because I got a chance to work with some absolutely amazing and experienced referees, guys that, you know, guys and girls that do the referee division one college. Yeah. They also referee all around the country and things like that. Well, I, you learned, want to learn from? I learned a ton uh, yeah. just in those two games. And it was, you know, the feedback I got, you know, things that I need to improve on and, you know, stuff like that was absolutely amazing. Um, nice. But I'm looking forward to cutting back, you know, the club <laughs> season starts this weekend. So I'm only doing like two or three games over the course of a weekend and yeah. none like in a row. So well, ho- hopefully it won't be as sore uh, uh, next week. <laughs> no, that is the hope. But um, we'll see. I actually had to give up my two f- uh, first two yellow cards this weekend. Nice. So I'll definitely uh, be sharing when I have to give out my first red card. Yeah, I want to know that. That's going to be yeah. that's going to be exciting. I missed it. I missed one by a game. There was a player that just punched another player, just clocked him. And that was, you know, <laughs> you want to get ejected for that. So, there you go. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to hear the red card stories. Those are always the best. Well, when I when I have one, I will uh, I will absolutely bring it to the show. All right, y'all. Well, uh, before we go, I would like to thank our awesome sponsors. Show your slabs, Slab Strong, Card Ladder, Vanity Slabs, and Denver Card Shows. Thank you guys so much. And, of course, Wax Pack and iHeart Media. Could not do this show without you guys. Thank you guys so much. And uh, new episode of Letter Rip will be out this week, as well as the return of the hobby in 60 it'll be out on socials and then of course we've also got the new mini series real rips which is a little mini break over on the reels over on social media so a lot of new content coming your way a lot more coming your way live episode coming up here we're gonna schedule one here coming up very soon a very special episode with some cool guests nice live show fun one interactive and just cool stuff but all that guys will let you know here in uh in the coming weeks but um till next week you guys know the deal keep ripping those packs pulling those hits we'll talk to you then peace